Hello, Runewraith here and welcome to my guide on the Abyssal Sire. In this guide, I'm going to walk you through everything from the hard requirements, recommended stats, how to get there, gear and upgrades, the fight mechanics, and an example fight and analysis. There are really two hard requirements for killing the Abyssal Sire. One, you need to be on an Abyssal Slay Demon's Slayer task. And two, you guessed it, you need to have 85 Slayer to kill Abyssal Demons. Uh, as a third, although not technically a hard requirement, access to the Fairy Rings after starting the Fairy Tarot Part 2 is basically essential for reasonable resupply and kill times. As far as the recommendations go for stats, I would say at least 80 in your ranged, 85 to 90 in your melee stats will, will do you well, 92 magic could definitely be beneficial for a Blood Barrage, but you could also get away, away with 88 magic for Shadow Barrage or 76 magic for Shadow Blitz. As always, stats are greater than gear, so if you're having trouble with this boss, get back to the Nightmare Zone, Ammonite Crabs, or wherever you train and bump up those melee stats. The Sire resides in the Abyssal Nexus. The easiest way to get to the Sire is through the Fairy Ring code DIP. You can then run through any of the four catacomb paths to reach a Sire. However, the two southern paths are significantly shorter than their northern counterparts. If you don't have access to the fairy rings, you can also get there through the Mage of Zamrak in low level wilderness just above Edgeville. There's a small entrance uh, which provides a one way passage to the Abyssal Nexus from the Abyss. For gear, you'll want to bring an eight way range and melee switch, but don't worry, you won't have to do any one tick eight way switches. I will be showing you two different options for gear for both low and high level players. The range gear isn't as important here since you are only using it for a portion of the fight where you shouldn't be taking any damage. Really better range gear just means faster kills and won't necessarily keep you from dying or make the fight any easier itself. Since you will be on task, you want to have an imbued Slayer Helmet or Black Mask, no exceptions here. That 15% task bonus is just too essential to pass up on. In this clip, I do the kill with a Glory, but you should probably just use a Fury for both melee and ranged since it's one less switch and provides solid defensive bonuses. I'm using an Ava's assembly here, but an accumulator can work just as well. In my arrow slot, I'm using the best Rada's blessing that I can from the achievement diaries. I've got full black dragon hide, snakeskin boots, and an imbued archer's ring for the accuracy bonus. I also have my bearer's gloves, which are essentially free, and of course my trusty toxic blowpipe with amethyst darts. Adamant darts also work just as well though. For my melee gear, I'm using a fire cape, fury, and Rada's blessing. I know in this clip it's my Blood Fury, but I didn't have another Fury at the time, and it does have the same stats. The Arc Lake, Arc Light is an essential part of the setup since it provides a massive DPS boost against demons, and its special attack reduces their defense. I would recommend a Dragon Defender in the Shield slot for a nice DPS boost, however the Dragonfire Shield provides a nice defensive bonus to help with learning the boss. I've got Torag's Plate Body and Legs on as some defensive pieces of gear my Barrow's Gloves and an imbued Berserker Ring, and finally, Dragon Boots. Again, I know I have primordial, primordial Boots on, I just didn't have Dragon Boots for this clip. And before you say, this boss is impossible to do without Prims and a Blood Fury, let me just say that if the primary cause of you dying to Sire is missing Prims and a Blood Fury, then there is absolutely a deeper issue going on here. These items will not make or break your kill, especially since Fury has the same stats as a Blood Fury. So again, if you're struggling with this, Go back, train up your stats a little bit more, get those a little bit higher, and I guarantee the fight will become much, much smoother for you. In my inventory, I bring a Super Combat Potion, Prayer Potion, Antidote Plus Plus, and Ranging Potion. I also bring one House Teleport Tablet, my Rune Pouch filled with Air, Blood, Soul, and Death Runes, and fill the rest of my inventory with Combo Eats like Sharks and Karambwans. So now I'm going to talk about the gear I would bring to do Sire. My high level gear upgrades the Glory to an Anguish, replaces Black Dragon Hide with Crystal Armor, upgrades the Snakeskin Boots to Bagasians, and replaces the Blowpipe with the Bow of Veridinen. If you aren't quite at this level yet, the order importance for these upgrades definitely goes Anguish first, Assembler over Accumulator second, Crystal Armor and Crystal Bow third, Bofa fourth, and the Bagasian Boots last. For the melee switch, I am bringing Full Bandos, a Torture, and a Vernic Defender, and Ferocious Gloves for the Strength and Accuracy bonuses. My inventory is basically the same, except I'm also bringing the Dragon Warhammer to see if I can lower the Sire's defenses, and my Farming Skill Cape. Farming Skill Cape is actually a great segue into the next section, which is useful upgrades to have for the Abyssal Sire. I bring my Farming Cape because it provides unlimited free teleports to a bank, and provides close access to my POH through the Spirit Tree in one inventory spot. 
I feel like it's a seriously underutilized piece of equipment in PVM just for this reason. It's also great for the Calphite Queen for the same reason. However, the biggest upgrade that you can make for killing Sire is to have an ornate rejuvenation pool in your house. It is seriously such a supply save to be able to instantly replenish all of your stats, run, health, and prayer on your way to the next kill. On that note, having a fairy ring in your POH will almost always be the closest fairy ring to your player, so it really helps to make the travel to Sire a lot quicker. If you don't have an ornate rejuvenation pool, you can always use a ring of dueling to teleport to the Ferox Enclave, and although that rejuvenation pool doesn't restore your special attack energy, it does restore everything else, which is still nice to have. If you are using Runelight, you can import a set of marked tiles using the Tile Markers plugin. The tiles will help to identify places where it's safe to stand while fighting Sire, and in the description for this video I'll leave all of the JSON code that you'll need to import these tiles exactly. If you didn't know, you can actually right click on the world map in RuneScape and click on import if you're using RuneLight, and this will allow you to import the uh, code that you've copied to your clipboard and it'll actually create those tiles exactly as I have them created, so you can be absolutely certain that you're marking the right ones. With all that out of the way, we can talk about some of the mechanics of the fight. I don't think most players enjoy the Abyssal Sire as a boss because, much like the Calphite Queen, you just take a good amount of unavoidable damage, and there are long animations which delay kill times. On top of that, Sire isn't in a particularly convenient location, so a lot of running is involved for maybe 1-3 to three kill trips if you are lucky. The Sire fight consists of three phases. Before the first phase, make sure to take a sip of your Ranging Potion and your Antidote++. Plus Plus. In the first phase, you should use a smoke-based spell from the Ancient Spellbook to stun the uh, Sire. This will cause the tentacles around him to go dormant for 30 seconds. Note that the tentacles can reach and hit you for 25 plus damage if they aren't stunned and you are standing off of the marked tiles. A higher level smoke spell will offer a better chance at stunning the Sire, with Smoke Barrage having a 100% chance to stun and Smoke Blitz having a 75% chance to stun. Kill each of the four respiratory vents as quickly as you can with range, and you'll likely only be able to kill two to three of the vents before having to restun the Sire with another smoke spell. For phase two of the fight, Sire will walk out from his throne and attempt to melee you. You should be praying melee and piety for this portion of the fight, and dump one or two of your Dragon Warhammer or Arclight specials on the boss. He will occasionally create a miasma pool underneath you, and if this happens, you should move at least two tiles to the east or west onto one of the marked tiles. He can also summon a spawn, which you should kill as quickly as possible so that it doesn't mature into a scion and cause you more trouble than it's actually worth. After doing enough damage in phase 2 of the fight, the boss will start walking further south. Run to the southernmost marked tiles, pray range and piety, and prepare to move. He will plant his feet, summon additional spawns, and create miasma pools underneath your feet every couple of ticks. You can use Blood Barrage here, here to heal up on some of the spawns if you need to, uh, since they have very low magic defense. It's best to get one arc light hit in and move two tiles and repeat to avoid all of the miasma damage. If you're standing still with a miasma pool underneath you, your character will take 10 to 30 poison damage every single tick. Luckily in phase three of the fight, he'll only summon the pools three times, so unlike phase two, you don't have to worry about dodging them throughout the duration of the fight. If you are having trouble dodging these, you should use the menu entry swapper plugin and find the shift click walk here option under the ground item swaps menu. This will allow you to hold down shift and click anywhere to walk instead of accidentally clicking on one of the 15 scions all around you because it does get pretty hectic during this phase of the fight. At some point in the third phase of the fight, the sire will teleport you right next to him. You have two ticks to move at least two tiles away from him or get hit up to 70 damage. You can just use the tile markers and move two tiles back to the southernmost tiles. This signifies the final stage of the fight. The spawns mature into scions after 12 seconds and will become much stronger. Ignore all the scions and focus on killing the boss as quickly as possible. If you have any dragon claws or special attack energy, now would be the time to use it, and then use those combo eats if your health gets dangerous to low. And really, that's all there is to the fight. So now I'm going to walk you through an example fight in my low level gear. This isn't a perfect sire kill, but it does go to show that even in mid level gear, this is a very achievable boss to farm. I start off by using my Shadow Barrage to stun all of these little tentacles and then proceed to start killing each of the respiratory systems with my blowpipe. I'm keeping an eye on the timer in the bottom corner of my screen. You can see I've got 5 seconds left now so I know exactly when I need to recast my Shadow Barrage. Now 
now that phase one is done, I switch into my melee gear and head to the front two tiles. I pre-prop with my super combat potion and I put on protect from melee and piety. I start to spec the, the boss with my arc light specials and I do manage to land one of them, which is pretty good. Now I just have to keep an eye out for those miasma pools and see if he actually spawns a scion in this face. He's not always going to spawn a scion or create miasma pools underneath you, but you should be prepared for either event to occur. After doing enough damage, we proceed to phase three of the fight where he's going to push us back to our southernmost tiles. I get ready for him to plant his feet and then just start attacking him. In this particular phase of the fight, uh, you can see I make a mistake here um, and I kind of am running all over the place. That's okay. Just try to get your footing and keep out of the way of those miasma pools. You can see I get one hit with the arc light in and then one hit with uh, the boss before I start moving. That way the miasma pools never actually catch up to me. So now he's finally teleported me so I need to run back to the final two squares back here and the miasma pools are only going to sp spawn three more times but he is going to create a whole bunch more uh, scions. Right now my focus is just DPSing down the boss and you can see that as I'm moving between the two tiles I am holding down shift to click underneath the tiles um, without uh, managing to click on any of the scions. I've complete the kill and DPS the boss down and that is the abyssal sire in a nutshell. Again this isn't a perfect kill but it, it did work. Hope you all learned something or at least feel a little bit more comfortable taking on the Abyssal Sire now. And feel free to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thank you and have a great rest of your day. Lord, give me a sign, a sign. I wanna be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't hear shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crap.